I'm Jake Bruton and welcome back. Today we are at an addition project that my firm Aero Building is doing here in Kansas City. And I want to talk to you about a specific product. Today's episode is sponsored by Corvent. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about how the overwhelming majority of the market here in Kansas City builds houses. Let's do it now. Okay, I kind of buried the lead a little bit. Today's episode is sponsored by Coravent. You can still see a little bit of our Coravent product behind us. And we're gonna dive into why we would use a rain screen, the importance of a rain screen, draining, drying, what the benefit is, how it makes your building last longer. But first, I wanna talk about plywood siding and the construction of the existing home. So the bump out you see behind me and this little gable and everything leading up to it, that's our addition. Everything that looks finished that actually has windows in it, that is the original building. We're waiting on windows to arrive. They'll be here next week, but we went ahead and sided and painted and we'll cut that out when the windows get here. In fact, you can kind of see that we have a window opening over on the uh, left-hand side for me. That would be the right-hand side for you. Let's talk about how the original house and all of the houses in this neighborhood are built and most of the houses in spec neighborhoods in Kansas City are built because I think it's unique to our market and I'm not sure why the spec builders in the market do this. So as with many markets, we get the stone or stucco or some sort of solid surface type material on the front, on the street side, on the pretty side, and then we get something else on the other three sides. And in this market, it's T111, plywood siding or OSB T111 almost exclusively. And it's a very interesting way that they do it. They call it single wall. And I was unaware of it until recently. It is a two by four wall with house wrap, not high quality house wrap, house wrap, and then T111 straight to the studs. So the structural sheathing is the T111. That's a challenge because then your windows get nailed to the face of the T111. There's no ability to detail or they're under the T111, but then they're on top of the house wrap. It's really not a system that allows for a lot of connections of control layers, knocking down of air leakage. It's just not a durable assembly. Water gets in, it's trapped between house wrap and rim joist the second it runs past the stud bays, and we see that kind of problem all the time. You'll see on the other side of the building here on the addition, we bumped out two foot wide, which meant we had to strip the back side of the building. And where we stripped the back side of the building? Underneath a window, there's rot at the rim joist because the window was leaking and it was running down the face of that house wrap, the back side of the cladding, and to the rim joist. And then there was a point where water was held in tension and that water was running horizontally and it was killing part of the building there. And when we stripped it, the clients actually said, are all of the windows on our building leaking? And we kind of went, potentially, because guess what? That window that's leaking is on the north side of the building and our weather in this market comes from the south and west. It's not a high exposure window and it was leaking and this building is less than 10 years old. So that's not a great assembly. Now, I mentioned before, stone, stucco, those other solid type materials on the front of the building. Guess what the builders here in this market do in the spec market on the front of the building? It's not single wall. It's almost always zip. So they know that they have water problems out front. And then we see rain screens and we see double layers of WRB as required by code. We see real uh, mesh scratch coats with drainage planes behind them. So they understand the risk out front where we have stucco and things like that. But for some reason on this side of the building, they're like, let's do it as cheaply as we possibly can. And so when the clients came to us and they said, we wanna add on the first thing we include in our pricing without even talking to the clients is we're not gonna do it that way. We're not doing single wall construction on our, our addition. That's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for a warranty nightmare on our side. So what do we do? I wanna show you what we have going. And what we have going here is we have a two by six wall. We have Zip R9 with one mechanical unit inside this space that's gonna take care of this like 14 by 14 addition. 
And so we have our WRB, our air control layer, you know, we're connected to our foundation and we're vented over top, but we have our normal air control layers on our ceiling. This thing is watertight and airtight before we start talking about putting cladding on the building. Therefore, we're not worried about this cladding, this T111 siding in this instance, being waterproof. So then our waterproof layers here, we're really worried about protecting this layer and making sure that this layer lasts as long as we possibly can. So in comes a rain screen. And when we start talking rain screen, there are a couple different ways that we can look at this. We could look at drying potential and only drying potential. And we look at drying potential only, the code recognizes that like dimpled house wraps and uh, hefty grain on OSB and things like that are draining materials, but they're not enough for like total capillary break. For capillary break, we need like a 16th or an eighth of an inch, something like that. But that's not enough for uh, drying potential in the sense of convective looping. And airflow is where we get real drying coming into play here. That's where a real space comes in. That's where our core event product comes in. And that's what we're gonna really talk about today. And so that's what we see here in the form of these uh, black corrugated strips. Now, full disclosure, because we were waiting on the windows and because it's getting into fall, the clients were gonna have some people over. We went ahead and sheeted the whole edition, painted it, everything to make sure that we were keeping our clients happy. I had the guys strip one back off. You can even see that we've boxed in our windows for temperature reasons. Uh, it is starting to get cold. So when we pulled this back off, we have our uh, corrugated plastic strips here. They are high density, like we're not mushing these strips. So they are a consistent nature. Uh, we actually get more compression out of the zip R, the, the uh, poly ISO behind the zip than we do out of these guys. So we're not worried about straightness with our siding or anything. They don't have to go behind a panel siding. They could go behind a lap siding. There's any number of uses for them. And they are directional. So the ones that you see vertical here have a drainage slot this direction. If we look at our bottom, we also have the SV3. That is effectively this kind of strip, but turned the other direction. So when water runs down, it can run through that. And it has a integrated bug screen on the bottom. That will keep anything from migrating in from the bottom. Now you could incorporate that at the top as well. We've experienced very little uh, in the way of bug migration, but if you were in a heavy area for pests, I would recommend putting it at the top. We didn't in this case because we're assuming we're gonna get enough airflow through this assembly that they're not gonna to wanna to migrate in. But if you're at all adverse to that risk, put it at the top as well, be done with it, don't even take the chance. It's not an expensive material, it's just a quality material that you could stuff up there without any problems. It wouldn't bother me at all. Now, I do wanna bring you around on the side and show you one more interesting thing for this project. Now. You can see here our mini split is sitting down really low in the dirt. We have a little bit of grade work to still happen here. This is that other bump out. So this came two feet off the house. So we have a cantilever here. Underneath this cantilever, we have the same uh, siding material as our soffit. That siding material is on zip on the same rain screen. So we have it on the horizontal as well. We have that horizontal that then feeds to a vertical and we have that SV3 on the horizontal and we have it on the horizontal this direction. So we have two of them back to back so that we have drying potential on the horizontal and we have drying potential on the vertical. We don't want any water held in tension. We don't want anything that runs down this to be able to lip its way underneath and then catch and stay underneath. All of this drying potential put together is the thing that's gonna make our cladding last longer. It's gonna make our cladding uh, finishes last longer. It's gonna keep paint from popping because it's pressure equalizing both sides of the cladding. It's, it's kind of like the secret weapon. This is a very inexpensive insurance policy to make this material that frankly is not a super fancy material last a heck of a lot longer to make our paint last a heck of a lot longer. Like if this saves one paint job in the next 15 years, this material paid for itself five times over, even on a little bitty addition like this. And it's 
it makes it so that we don't have to worry about this cladding being the thing that's watertight. We just have to worry about whether or not we install these guys correct. And these are kind of idiot proof. So take the time to think about where's the water gonna get trapped, how's it gonna get out, and how are we gonna provide drying? And I think you have a much more durable assembly. So until next time, thanks for watching. Have a good day.